Oh man, clouds again, son of a- This tutorial is on how to set a custom tracking rate in your Lost Mandy Gemini for tracking comets. And yes, your Lost Mandy Gemini supports custom tracking rates. And we're gonna show you how to train your Lost Mandy Gemini uh, to track a comet. Atlas is here, a lot of people are interested in imaging this. So let's take a look at how to do that. Before we get started, I wanna point out there are two different ways to image comets. Uh, the first is to do a custom tracking rate, uh, and that is what we're going to show you now, and it has to do with training uh, on the specific target so we can keep it centered in the frame at all times. The flip side, though, is that the star field is going to be blurred, so that's one approach. Uh, this approach, by the way, custom, custom tracking, is important for visual, so if you're just watching the comet, you're definitely going to want to set a custom tracking rate. The second way to image a comet is by doing standard sidereal time. You're going to have the star field be fixed or unmoving and the comet will move through it. So targeting is a little bit different. You're gonna pick an area of the sky where you know the, target, the comet rather is going to go through it. And then you, as you image it, the comet moves through the frame. And then there are tools uh, like some from PixInsight and I'll put a link uh, below on how to do that that allow you to do comet registration with this type of approach. And it seems to me to be the preferred approach nowadays given those types of tools. But let's talk about how to set a custom tracking rate right now. To start your training for custom comet tracking, you wanna be set up as though you're imaging. So that means it's at night, you have everything running, it's in focus, and you have your target or your comet centered in your image or in your eyepiece. And this is a very important starting point. Next, what you're gonna do from the handset, we're gonna to go to menu, track, and you'll see it's in sidereal time, that's a normal tracking rate, but we're gonna go ahead and click on user defined, and again, making sure that our target or our comment is centered, we are now going to click train. And we're gonna let this run for about four or five minutes. It's not critical during this time that you keep your target in the frame but it is helpful to make sure that it's, it's somewhere in the frame because later on at the end, we are going to center it. So during this time, you can kind of chill out, do whatever. When you are ready to finish your training, the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that that target is centered in your frame. And it's helpful to use your bullseye in your imaging program or of course your eyepiece. When your four or five minutes have passed and you have then centered your target, you're gonna to wanna to press Comet, and it's gonna give you the information about the RA and DEC uh, differences, but then you're gonna press Set. You'll notice now that the tracking rate is set to Comet or User Defined, and that means that during your observation, the Comet's gonna remain in the middle of your eyepiece, or during your imaging, your Comet is gonna remain in the center of your frame. And that's all there is to it. Just a couple of additional quick notes. First, if you power cycle your Gemini, it's gonna revert back to sidereal rate, which is standard tracking. You can go back into the tracking function and re-enable your user-defined rate. Uh, and the second thing is, in addition to comets, of course, it's good for asteroids. It is not good, however, for tracking the International Space Station or satellites. This mount is designed primarily for things that originate in the cosmos and not man-made things. They're just, they just go too fast. The last thing I'll mention is that this is actually a really great way to track the moon more accurately. So as you know, we actually have a lunar rate in the Gemini, but the moon can also move in the deck axis as well. So pick a feature on the moon that you wanna keep centered, typically a crater or something like that, and then do the same training, keeping that particular feature centered, and you're gonna find that your moon imaging is gonna have much more accurate tracking in uh, both axes. So that's it for now. Please hit the subscribe button below and that little bell to be notified of new videos. And if you have any comments or questions, please uh, post them below and we'll answer them for you. And we look forward to more of these videos in the future.